Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a um, we are going to do a landscape, like kind of a, a cityscape type thing. And I did one, but I wasn't really happy with it. But I thought I'm going to give it another try because I think I know what I didn't like before that I would like this time. I'm going to wet both sides of my paper. I'm using some new watercolor brushes that I got from Arteza. They sent me to review and I will link them in the video description along with a 10% off coupon code if you like the looks of these. Um, there's a, they have a couple different sets and I got the set of 12 because there were some larger size brushes and I'm always on the lookout for good large size brushes for watercolor because I like my brushes to hold a lot of water and paint and um, bigger brushes get quite a bit more expensive and I find that like a big brush it comes to a point like a big round that comes to a good point can like do the work of almost all the other size brushes unless you just don't want to hold so much water um, so anyway I'm gonna use my M gram watercolor palette because why not it's my favorite and even though I don't it doesn't all fit on screen at the time at once I think you'll be able to see what I'm up to and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab some warm yellow I'm gonna use some uh, some gamboge. You can use whatever warm yellow you happen to prefer. And I'm going to start that kind of like right in the middle here. When you wet the front and back of your paper, you will notice your paint doesn't spread quite as much as it does when you are, um, when you're working on just like wetting the front and, the, and it's taped down or in the back is, uh, the back is dry. I'm also going kind of um, a little heavier with the color because it is going to shift because the paper is really wet. So you all you always have more of a drying shift when you have um, a really wet background. And I will link a reference photo down below where I'm getting the sky and the cityscape from, so you can kind of go from that. Now I'm going to take some um, rose and I'm going to add that in. Let them kind of blend together and just kind of bring some of that up into the sky and I'm also going to bring this down. Even though this is a cityscape, there's kind of like some hazy mist and these colors are going to be reflected in the hazy mist. So I want to make sure I get those, I get everything kind of covered in this initial layer. The next color I'm going to use is cerulean blue. So we do have a triad here. whatever brand you have. Let's start up here. Throwing in some clouds. I'm gonna have to go a bit darker but this will get us started anyway. And some cerulean down here in the bottom. We're gonna be painting this entire painting wet into wet so um, that's going to be kind of, kind of fun. I want to get a little bit more cerulean, get my color a little bit darker up here. So far I've been using this number 20 round and I'm really liking this brush. Add some pink towards the edges of those clouds. You can be as bold as you want with your color, personal preference. And take some of the blue and pink mixed together to make some purple. Add that into some of these clouds, and that's like when it when it's over here by the yellow, that purple is going to make the yellow de um, saturate a bit, so it's going to be more of like a gray. See what I'm saying about having one brush that can kind of do a lot of the work. I love the texture that cerulean is, um, is giving me up there. Cerulean is a beautiful granulating color. If you have a true cerulean, a cerulean hue isn't going to granulate so much because it's got, it doesn't, it has um, PB15 instead of PB36. 
but sometimes it will because sometimes whites added to paint will make them kind of separate and granulate a bit. A little bit darker up here. And if you want to grainy that out, go ahead and add some yellow into it and that will that'll gray out when you get the blue and the red, because purple and yellow are opposites. So if you want some dark, ooh, that's too brown, need a little more blue in there. It's up to you whether you want to do that. I'll do it so you can see whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, don't do it. Easy, huh? Sometimes people think they have to do it exactly the same way as the person doing the video, and you don't. That's what's so great about, you know, watching a video. You can do it however you want to do it. You can get the idea, and you can move on from there. Well, since you wet the back of the paper, you do get more time to work wet into wet. So if you feel like you're running a marathon, like I can't keep up, you're gonna have more, more time. So keep that technique in mind anytime you um, wanna do something wet into wet, but you always feel like you're fighting the paper, the paper wants to dry on you too, too quickly. Oh, something else I want to mention. I am part of a group class over at sketchy.com. And I'll put a link to that in the video description in a $5 off coupon code so that uh, you can join me for paint skiving if you want. It's uh, happening in November. And um, there's uh, several instructors. I've got two projects in it. The, the normal price of the course is $39.99. And it's a $5, $5 off coupon code if you, wanna, if you wanna check it out. I'll have that in the video description. So there'll be like uh, painting projects and classes released all through November and you can follow along be part of the group get some painting done get some learning I'm doing a couple still life projects should be a lot of fun and I hope to see you there okay so I like this color that I'm using um, I'm gonna put in kind of a far away kind of like a skyline and you can switch to a flat brush if you want to. I'm gonna be switching to a flat brush in a minute, but I think I'm gonna do this in the round brush just so it, it um, doesn't get too... too detailed. And now I'm gonna switch, I think. Sometimes you, with bigger brushes like this, you will need to rinse them out really good under the sink or even wash them with soap and water. Um, when you have a lot of bristles like that, it can tend to get, uh, it can tend to stay a little, a little full of paint. Now I'm gonna get some of this uh, pink in here and I'm gonna add some of that to my skyline because uh, where, the, where the sun's going down, it definitely gives a really red cast to everything, so I just wanna get that in there. I know it's a little exaggerated. Then maybe I'll spread it out with a, this brush here. Just kinda flick the edges, the edges of what you've painted that will help it get that misty, diffused look. Kind of pretty, I think. So the Inktober prompt is roof, was roof today. So I was like, oh, can I do something that I can combine? Uh, I can combine both things because this week is very busy and <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get everything done that I wanna get done. It's just one of those, one of those weeks. I'm like, well, if I can combine my watercolor <laughs> project with an Inktober project, then uh, then that will work lovely. Soften that on the bottom. Paper's still wet, so that's good. Okay, now I'm going to do another row of buildings. I'm going to take some of this... Uh, 
take some of that gray. We did that with our three primary colors, our cerulean blue, our gamboge, and our rose. <clears throat> and finding the balance can be a little tricky, so I keep a rag handy that I can just kind of dab my brush on because um, often we're just kind of we have to we have to make sure we don't have too much water or we're going to end up with um, with it just kind of uh, diffusing on us where we don't want it to. So and, and we don't want really crisp edges, but we do want. We do want to have like just some shapes that appear to be one building up a little bit higher than the others. We do want to have some shapes that are a little bit more defined. So I'm trying to like get pick up paint around the edges of my puddle where it starts to dry off a little bit so I won't end up with So I don't end up with uh, stuff that's too watery. Now I do want to make up a little bit thicker of a paste here so I can have some darker color. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that yellow because it's juicier and just make that um, paintable basically. And I'm pretty much just trying to get the top edges of buildings defined because the bottom parts can just kind of fade away. Rather than dipping into my water, I'm just dipping into some wetter areas on my palette. Let's do something a little bit wider over here, maybe. And you can do like something silhouetted in the front if you want to. Um, I, tr I did that with like the, I did a version of this and I wasn't really happy with it. I had done some birds on a wire and I didn't like the way it came out. That's not to say that you wouldn't like it. But I think I was rushed because I know that it's like, I've got such a busy day and I only have a, s a short amount of time to paint. And I think sometimes when you do that, you make foolish choices and then things don't work out so well. Whereas if I had just kind of like left the uh, left the painting alone for a bit, I probably would have been happier and I could have made a better choice. All right, for this last row, I'm gonna have my buildings a little bit darker. I'm going to just grab a little bit more cerulean. Add in some pink, try not to get extra, um, extra pigment, extra water rather. I want plenty of pigment. I want the pigment, I don't want the water. And then just try to get some darker skyscrapers, maybe make them a little bit bigger, wider. Some of them anyway. I want them to be poking out of the, the mist. Can you tell them a country girl? <laughs> oh, look at this lovely city. This person who never spends time in a city has painted. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Touche. New York City. <laughs> Random, nondescript city. I'm just kind of darkening a few of these, like just little shapes, because I feel like they just kind of faded away a little bit too much. And then on the bottom, I think I will just um, soften that out. Now I think this 
could be a fun starting point for um, a little bit of color there. I think this could be a fun starting point for like a uh, a painting or you could just leave it as is. You cut it up and make bookmarks. I don't know. I just want to do a little bit of experimenting wet into wet and um, and see you know what we ended up with. And I did leave some a little bit of sparkle in the sky. I'm not sure if I want to go in and soften that. Maybe I should take a clean brush and go in there. I can just kind of soften the edges because it's not it's not a it's not dry yet. So you have a little bit of a time. But I mean, you could put birds flying, you could put all sorts of things. Maybe I'll go actually take this larger brush here and we do some larger buildings here. Oh, I like that. the bottom. Yeah, so let this be a jumping off point for a background. Maybe you want to do some pen and ink on it. Maybe you want to do um, something else after it dries, but it's a great way to just kind of practice your wet into wet, practice your skies, and have a good time. I will put a link to everything I mentioned in the video description. I'll be playing with these brushes some more. I played with them a bit, and I like the way that they work. They seem to be a pretty good value, so I'll link to those if you are looking for some golden tacklon brushes, synthetics, that you could use for watercolor gouache, or actually I think you could use them with acrylics as well. And that's all for today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this easy project, and until next time, happy crafting!